Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining Flex Train, a training opportunity brought to you by Johnstone Supply. So as we continue getting prepped for the up and coming winter season, I know none of us are quite ready for that, never actually are, but it's almost here. And you know, this is probably our last week of good weather before we start diving into our heating season. You know, there's even a chance we can have some cooling calls today. I think we're looking for upper 70s here in central Indiana. So as, as we start talking about heating and, and understanding things that we need to be paying uh, you know, diligent attention to, temperature rise is one that it, it, we sometimes take it for granted what we're actually doing with temperature rise. And so to understand what temperature rise is as far as our equipment, let's look at our installation manuals. So this one's pulled directly out of a, um, out of a Daikin installation manual. And what, what the OEM will, will tell you about um, checking temperature rise is that the very first thing that we have to do is we need to operate that furnace with the furnace firing for approximately 10 minutes. So we can get the flame regulated, so we can get heat you know, actually transferring across our metals and the heat exchangers. And then we wanna check the BTU input to the furnace. So it says, do not exceed the input rating stamped on the rating plate and ensure that all registers are open and all duct dampers are in their final or fully or fully partially open position. When we look at BTU input, typically we're going to look at that nameplate and see what the actual rated nameplate is and then you know multiply it times the percentage of the furnace. But that's not the actual true calculation. The only way that we can get a 100% calculation of our BTU capacity is if we clock the meter to see what our actual fuel usage is for our appliance. And then we do a combustion analysis to get the actual AFUE, the, the true uh, fuel efficiency all from our appliance. But most of the time we're going to kind of ballpark it so we can at least see if we're getting in that window because we have a window that we're going to be looking for for our temperature rise. So then we're going to place thermometers in the return and in the supply ducts as close to the furnace as possible. But we have to be careful not to put them too close to the furnace because we can actually get additional radiant heat off from those heat exchangers. That's not our true air supply temperature. So when you look at that shading, that cross hatched area that we're talking about that is in the installation manual, they don't want us to grab the temperature on a um, on a vertical upflow installation. They don't want us to grab the temperature directly off the top of the furnace. They want us to move off from the side of it a little bit. So we have an opportunity for our, our heat that is radiating off from our tubes and off from our heat exchangers to dissipate and you know and balance out. So we gotta make sure that we're grabbing the proper place to grab the temperature. And that's only gonna be found in your installation menus. And then we're gonna subtract the return air temperature from the supply temperature to determine the actual temperature, temperature rise. And we need to make sure that we need, you know, we leave adequate time for our probes to adjust because some of the thermometers that we use take a few minutes for them to actual balance out. They're not a quick responding. And then we're gonna adjust the temperature rise by adjusting our circulator blower speed. We do not adjust temperature rise by manifold pressure. And I have young technicians particularly come to me all the time and go, hey, you know, I was running too much of temperature rise, so I backed the gas pressure back down and now everything's fine. We go, no, that is not the proper procedure. Proper procedure is to set our manifold pressure proper to our appliance and adjust our fan speed to get the temperature range back where we need it to be. So we are going to increase a blower speed to reduce our temperature rise, and we're going to decrease the blower speed to increase the temperature rise. So it's very much a factor of how much airflow we're moving across the heat exchanger. Because if we think about a heat load, it is amount of BTUs over a period of time, right? So if I change the BTU capacity of my appliance by adjusting manifold pressure, I've now affected the total BTU capacity of my appliance versus time. So I've changed the heat capability of my appliance. So we always start with manifold pressures, which is why we talked about manifold pressures last week. We get our manifold pressures in parameter, and then we can make adjustments in airflow to control our temperature range. So if we look at how to properly measure that, so this is actually a cartooned character of uh, one of my Daikin Fit systems over at our Indy West location. Actually, Jesse's over there getting prepared for a, a Daikin Fit class today going over this particular piece of equipment. So if we look at that piece of equipment and how to properly do a temperature rise, you know, we just, we look at the installation. So this particular one, you know, it is an upflow application. So we have a return on the bottom. We have our supply box coming off the top with our registers. 
And we're going to take some measurements of the air coming into the furnace and the air coming out of the furnace and not working directly above the heat exchanger. We want to actually get our temperature away from that radiant heat. So we would actually measure the temperature at the outlet on the register, slightly off from vertical. So if I was to measure temperatures on this particular piece of equipment and find that I had a 70 degree return and a 140 degree supply temperature, that would give me 140 minus 70 is a 70 degree temperature rise. So what I want to do is I want to look at my actual installation manual or my actual certification tag that's on the inside of my piece of equipment to find out what my proper temperature range is. This particular one, I'll see that I have a temperature rise between 35 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So I've already found that I had a 70 degree temperature rise, so I'm above my total temperature rise for my piece of equipment. I am going to end up having a heat exchanger failure on this piece of equipment because I'm not within range. So what my range is, if I look at that, if I take my 65 minus 35, that gives me a 30 degree window that I need to be in. And optimal performance, the really the only way we're gonna find what the true maximum efficiency of that piece of equipment is, would be to test the actual flue gases with a combustion analysis to find out how close, this is a 96% furnace, so how close am I to 96? How much above 96 can I go? Well, by talking to engineers, we found that on not all, but a lot of pieces of equipment, a lot of furnaces, gas-fired furnaces, the optimal performance for that piece of equipment is typically gonna be at about 55% of its temperature rise. So that's taken in effect its maximum fuel efficiency, its maximum AFUE, and it's also looking at the longevity of the heat exchanger. Because I'm probably gonna burn just a tad bit more efficient as I get to the top end of my temperature rise, but then I'm also gonna be shortening the life expectancy of my heat exchanger. So around 55% of my temperature rise is a optimal range for many gas furnaces. So if I took my 30 degree window and I multiplied that times 0.55 or my 55%, that would give me about 16.5 degrees from my bottom of my scale, right? So I would simply take my bottom scale, which is my 35 degrees, I'd add 16.5 to that. And that would give me a 51.5 degree temperature rise. So my goal is to going to be around 51.5 degrees temperature rise for this particular appliance for its optimal performance, right? So if we go back to our piece of equipment and we go, okay, so we know that we have a 70 degree return and our ideal operating range is probably going to be around 51.5 degrees above that, my temperature rise. 70 plus 51.5, I should have a supply air temperature around 121.5. That is actually my goal, not 140. So I'm going to be shooting for 121.5. So we look at our piece of equipment and go, okay, well, maybe I'll just start making adjustments to my fan speed until I find that point. Well, we can do that, but it's probably gonna take a little while. It's actually a very simple calculation. If we look at the installation manual, and if we look at the tag for our piece of equipment, we're gonna be able to calculate pretty quickly what the actual CFM is needed to be able to achieve that temperature rise. So if I go back to my tag, and I look at that, and I know that my 120,000 BTU furnace was an input BTU rating. It runs at about 96% efficient, which means my output is gonna be around 115,000 BTUs. So if I set my manifold pressure correctly on my furnace, I should have approximately 115,000 BTUs coming out of that furnace, right? So if I look at the BTU versus temperature rise chart that is in the installation manual, it's literally a matter of plugging some numbers. So I know that I have an output BTU of 115,000, right? Told us that on our tag. 
and I know that I'm looking for around a 51.5 degree temperature rise because that's what I calculated to be pretty well optimum for what I'm doing, right, for this particular appliance. Well, if I simply plug those in, I'm going to see where I line up. So my 115 and my 51.5 is going to end up around here on my chart. And if I simply look at where my CFM would be all from that calculation, it's going to tell me that I'm not halfway between 2000 and 22, I'm slightly over. So I'm less than 2100. I'm probably in that 2050 CFM, somewhere in that ballpark. So I can go to my furnace and I can select this V tap that is going to be slightly about that. So if it's a five ton drive, it's going to push 2000 CFM and higher. If you look at some of the new variable speed furnaces, I have five ton drives that can push almost 2200 CFM with proper static, with 0.5 or less static. I can move a bunch of airflow with these things. So all I really need to do, find my BTU output, find my temperature rise, select the CFM that I need, and I'm going to end up at that temperature rise without having to just constantly make adjustments. Because back in the older days when we had permanent split capacitor blower motors, we just had a few speed taps. So we just moved our speed taps until we got close enough. Well, with our new uh, variable speed equipment, we can fine tune these CFMs in our pieces of equipment, which means we can fine tune our temperature rise very, very easily. What if we're talking about an air handler? An electric furnace. You know, one of the big complaints in the industry is that, you know, hey, that electric furnace just didn't get as hot as my gas furnace. Well, actually, that probably has to do with proper setup of the system because we can still achieve any of those kind of numbers if we set our system up to have a proper temperature rise because we actually design our systems based on temperature rise. So if we look at the installation manual, now let's look at our piece of equipment. So we got our return coming in here on the bottom of our air handler. We have our supply coming out the top of that. If we look at the chart in the installation manual, it actually gives us temperature rise settings based on CFM and what size heat kit selection we have. And it'll also even give us some BTU ratings for those heat kits. So we could take if we wanted to maintain that around 51.5 degree temperature rise, I could just go onto my chart, select my temperature rise, select the corresponding heat kit. So if I wanted around a 50 or 51 degree temperature rise, I would need my 19.2 kW heater, which is a 20 kW heater. And I could set my CFM for 1200 CFM and I would have a 50 degree temperature rise on my electric furnace. So, it really is about finding the comfort level and finding the proper CFM to maintain temperature rises on our piece of equipment because we have a lot of flexibility in our equipment. We just need to know what the parameters are that maintains the safe operation of our appliance. And we also need to understand how comfortable our homeowner wants to be. So yeah, when we go to a electric furnace or an air handler, we're going to sacrifice some energy efficiency to maintain that 50 degree temperature rise. We're going to be running a 20 kW heater at 1200 CFM, but we're going to be able to achieve 50 degrees of temperature rise for those homeowners. So temperature rise is very misunderstood in our industry. A lot of times we set the system up and we don't pay enough attention to what temperature rise is. And we don't design our systems around temperature rise. And we should. We should be able to understand how comfortable this homeowner wants to be. Because really, if we look at that, I could even run a 55 degree temperature rise on my electric furnace. And I'm still well within the manufacturer specifications for that. All I'm doing is I'm dropping my CFM from 1200 down to 1100 and I can get a 55 degree temperature rise out of that thing. If I, you know, if I wanted to go higher and run a 30 kW heater in that, I could run 1400 CFM at 30 kW and end up with a 65 degree temperature rise that's pushing a whole bunch of BTUs. So learning a little bit about the piece of equipment that we're working on, understanding its minimum and maximum window for its temperature rise, and actually calculating where we are will give us an idea of the performance of our piece of equipment. 
So we don't always have the time to clock a meter to get gas input. We don't always have the time to do a combustion analysis just to get the fuel and the actual fuel efficiency out of it. But if we have our manifold pressure set properly to the manufacturer specifications, and we have verified our temperature rise by our equipment detail tag or installation manual, we can get that temperature rise tuned in very, very close to its optimal performance just based on temperature rise and CFM. So not a real long class. Um, we'll probably dive into some of our formulas a little bit later. For those of you who actually like to calculate our formulas, to see what those exact temperature rises are, it's very easy to do in a gas furnace or in an electric furnace. Like in our electric furnace, we're just using volts times amps times 3.41, which is a BTU calculation factor to convert it from watts to BTUs. And then we're gonna uh, multiply that times our delta T or temperature rise and 1.08, which is a correction factor based on density of air. So as we change elevation, we actually have to modify our formula depending on the density of air. So we typically use that 1.8 times delta T. So that is calculated for anything less than 1,000 feet above sea level. Once we get above 1,000 feet, we actually have to start derating our calculation because of the change in density in air above 1,000 feet. So that calculation is right out of installation manuals as well. So I'm going to have to wrap things up a little bit early today. I'm heading over to Indy West to uh, help Jesse out with the uh, Dyke and Fit class. Does anyone have any questions or comments about temperature rise while we have the opportunity? All right. Well, if not, just send me an email, text, give me a call, uh, drop a line on YouTube channel. And um, we will see you all next week on FlexTrain.